the writing file mp4 streaming okay i got it now let's stop this shit as the name says and probably most of the viewers know fm synthesis is where you have one signal generator that modulates uh, the frequency or the phase technically speaking of another signal generator and in the simplest case these are the sinusoidal signal generators so let's take a look at this example <coughs> so here we have um, a modulator which is a sinusoid with the frequency assigned to variable ff0 and uh, whose, ma ma whose amplitude is uh, multiplied by the carrier frequency carrier signal frequency and by mod index uh, control signal and then it's uh, multiplied by the envelope generator signal and the carrier correspondingly correspondingly is a uh, sinusoidal signal with the frequency f yeah which is our fundamental frequency and uh, the modulators output uh, added to it in this um, example probably should be told that what I use here is an NDEF which is a proxy for uh, the synth definition and the synthesis node well technically speaking is a proxy for a synthesis node but that's how it works so it's a data structure that takes your function this one makes a synth definition from it uh, interpreting it well basically almost in the same manner as a synth def class does and then it can create a synthesis node for you and change its parameters on the fly and it can create a formalized GUI for that which makes it very uh, convenient to prototype especially to pro prototype effects but I also use it to prototype well, any algorithm uh, the control signals specified here in order to be uh, properly utilized in GUI require specs to be specified well as with any GUI with sliders and knobs and all that so I added the <coughs> the specs and uh, um, created a GUI for it so let's take a listen what, what we have here yeah here's the GUI you can see the sliders they <coughs> follow the ranges that are specified in these arrays yeah. I will return to this to these things in later videos uh, now just let's take it for granted so you have something going from 0 to 10 yeah that's mod index and this mod index here will go from 0 to 10 and that's enough for, for the beginning for the beginning now <coughs> the key rule about FM synthesis if the modulators and carriers frequencies relate to each other as integers or in other words have 
a relationship as integers to each other, then you will get the signal output as uh, something that you can assign the pitch to. I mean, your brain will assign a pitch to it. Probably not a best expl explanation, but let's take a look at the real example. Now, the fundamental here is uh, one kilohertz, just for clarity. Let's make the range a bit smaller. Just a little bit so that we can see the label. So one kilohertz. Now the ratio is now controlled by the two parameters F0 ratio 1, F0 ratio 2. Here they are. These go to the modulator's frequency. Yeah. So it's something over something. Yeah. And if we specify these some things as integers, then we will get the musical signal. Well, musical in 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 a, a sense that we can assign a pitch to it. Now, the simplest things is if the ratio is some integer to one. And uh, let's start with one to one. Let's uh, make the modulation index a bit bigger. And now we see what we get out, uh, out of it is uh, fundamental at 1 kilohertz, which is here. It's a uh, carrier's frequency. And then the uh, second harmonic, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and, it's, and so on. As long as we will increase the modulation index, uh, we will get more and more of them to the point that they will start allies or alias. They will start fold in a spectral view and in, in the signal itself. And in this, uh, and this will continue like for how much the, the, the data structures allow you. I mean, which value you can assign to it, and you can assign the rather big values, it, the process will follow. You can fold the spectrum as much as you want. And this is, by the way, one of the most effective ways to create uh, lots and lots of uh, uh, different noises, yeah, with different colors and different uh, behaviors in time, just by having two sinusoidal signal generators. But now I want to talk about something else. Let's take a look at what happens if we make it 2 to 1. So it's 2 over 1. And what we see now, we have only <clears throat> 3, 5, 7, 8, and so on. And we don't have the har harmonics at like the second, the fourth one, the sixth one and so on. That's 2 to 1. Let's take 3 to 1. The 3 to 1 gives us the spectrum where we have fundamental, second harmonic, then third one is omitted, then again two harmonics, then next is omitted, two harmonics, the next is omitted. Yeah, let's have 4 to 1. <clears throat> now it's almost like the 2 to 1, yeah? The only difference is that amplitude relations, uh, relationship between the uh, other harmonics is different. And why is that? I will explain a bit later. But now let's take a look at 5 to 1. Hmm? So we see, with the increase of the ratio, we get the gaps between the harmonics uh, become bigger and bigger, yeah. And uh, that's one of the aspects. To get a better picture about what actually gets generated uh, around this carrier frequency, let's make the ratio less than one, but again with the integer relationships. So let it make it 1 
over to. Now what we see is looks like an undertone. Yeah. Let's make one over three. Now we see even more undertones. Now let's just drag that thing higher. And what we will see is that actually the com spectral components generated fold from zero to right and as the amplitude goes down they return kind of they return to the fundamental or to carrier frequency so in other words this is again the modulational approach to create a format the last subject is that okay with those sinusoidal signals we get uh, well kind of we can get let's say it like that we can get harmonics for a carrier signal the thing is that works only if we have sinusoids if we have something with the if the modulator let's say it like that let's if the modulator has something more than one uh, spectral component what we will get as the, as the result is uh, some and different tones between those components so the spectrum will be much richer than if it will be just two operators an operator is just a um, modulator and carrier signal pair so if we would sum the outputs of two operators it's not as rich spectrum as we would get if we just take two modulator signals and one carrier signal and that's only three signal generators two operators will take four so let's take a closer look at this approach now here we specify the ratio as one uh, number yeah in the previous example we had two but here we have just one that will be just the result of this calculation <clears throat> let's close this for now and let's try this one now what we have here is a sum of two modulators B and C going into one a so we have its frequency specified as f which is a freq control um, um plus the sum of b and c yeah each one has its modulational index and if this modulational index is equal to zero then the effects of if effect of its modulation disappears yeah so let's put them to zero what we he hear now is the only carry signal yeah now let's bring in the modulator one which has ratio of one yeah so sorry modulator one is mod in zero yeah i start with zero because supercollider starts with zero as most computer languages so what we get is as with previous example is we have all the harmonics for this signal yeah now let's add another one which has the ratio of one 1.333 and this still is a integer ratio because this is what we get if we will calculate something like uh four to three i guess yeah yeah four to three gives us this one three 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 so but what i want to talk about is not this ratio thing now but take a look at what happens uh to the left of the carrier frequency we have two undertones now let's remove the first one which didn't have any undertones and leave 
Only the second one. Now only one undertone, yeah? Now let's introduce another one. Does it have undertones? No, it doesn't. Now let's introduce the second again. What we have? This is the result of generation of some and different tones. So we have very rich spectrum. And if we will introduce even the third one, it will become even more richer. So we can create a very dense spectral uh, regions with this method. And probably if you have done some amount of mixing and using some distortion effects or, or, or those compressors with uh, non linearities in, uh, in the output section, that's basically what uh, audio engineers utilized, especially during analog uh, analog era, because the distortion that comes from overdriving the analog <coughs> equipment is basically the one of the kinds of modulational synthesis, and it does just that generates some and different tones. So, with FM synthesis, we have the very uh, juvenile control over these aspects. Okay, now. I spoke too much and it's a night time in Petersburg now so I kind of want to go to sleep probably <coughs> uh, let's take a look into let's take a look to this example uh, Okay, let's take a look at this example. Here we have three modulator signals that control the frequency of one carrier. As with previous example, we have their modulation indices as a separate parameters. Also, we have them. Um, we have their amplitudes or modulational indices multiplied by the envelope, and we calculate the power operation on these envelopes. As you already have seen with the spectrum analyzer. Basically, the modulational index in all of those modulational synthesis approaches is a very close correlate of brightness. And that's basically the reason why I uh, always tend to multiply it by something that controls the overall amplitude. So, I make these two parameters correlate. Just as not quite like, but in a sense of how it takes place with mechanoacoustical instruments. If you strike the piano key faster, then the sound becomes not only louder, but also brighter. Yeah. So I emulate the same thing here, because here it doesn't happen by itself. You have to specify it with a very artistic intention. Now. I take the first one with the power of uh, 0.8, which will make it louder than the second two, which are taken to the power of 1.4 and 2.5. <coughs> and uh, the ratio is specified by one number, same as the example before. So let's take a listen what we get from here.
don't quite like it. Let's take, try another one. No, not this one. No. Last try. Another last try. Okay. <laughs> Let it be. Now what we hear is the monophonic signal that we have in the left channel, yeah. <clears throat> we have uh, basically four sinusoid signals, three modulators and one carrier, yeah. Now we can make two copies of them by introducing uh, the pink noise, uh, two pink noises that we multiply by the envelope we have to generate same as with the example with green scene now we get it kind of in the middle uh, it will introduce a little cross correlation uh, fluctuations but not that much what I want to do next is to add some uh, add some differences, add some uh, offsets to the modulator's frequencies. So those integer ratios will not be quite integer. And this way, by introducing plus three, minus three hertz uh, to the result of ratio calculation, we will introduce some very nice beatings. And these beatings are very nice to our ears. And these beatings will be different for the left and right channel. And this way, now our modulators are not the copies that go to the left and right, but different generators that we have in left and right. And their uh, beating frequencies are always different, and that's why we get uh, a wider image. Yeah. The thing is, we can get even even wider and deeper uh, result. That's just for the sake of the contrast. Disable these guys now. And introduce the fourth uh, modulator which is the white noise now add it to the left and right and in left and right channels the white noise generators are different so the noises actually we have two different white noises yeah. and these white noises are low pass filtered with this lag thing and lag thing is actually puts the white noise output into the one pole filter uh, the only difference to the one pole filter itself, like spec like declared by itself in the text, is that here its coefficient is uh, represented by the time value. So we just talk about here we talk about how its impulse uh, impulse characteristic, how much longer its impulse characteristic will become. The thing is, when we filter something or go with the synthesized design, we go the subtractive synthesis way. Uh, the, in some cases, the downside of it is that 
compared to the modulational signal, modula modulational synthesis output, this sonic results will usually be kind of kind of farer, not as bright and crispy as modulational synthesis. In some cases, people don't like that crispiness of modulational synthesis. Yeah, but uh, but that depends on artistic task. Yeah, so. The thing is, that difference comes from the use of filters, because recursive filters, what they do, aside from uh, uh, working like, like changing the uh, balances of different frequency regions, they lengthen the impulse characteristics of the whole system. And that's also an effect that, that affects the <clears throat> aesthetics of the result so that's not a bad thing in some cases that's the thing you want but it just should be taken into account like we just should understand why something is happening so let's listen to the white noise effect almost like the reverberation yeah but the reverberation that doesn't have uh, uh, a tail which is the very desirable thing uh, in some cases especially if you want to add something to rather dense mix uh, because the reverberation tail in some cases and it's technically considered as a uh, have a dictionary behind me um, a signal to be removed yeah a signal to be removed a signal that we should remove in order to have clarity yeah in speech technologies for example the one of the things that usually is to be removed before for, for the sake of the good speech analysis is a reverberation so it's kind of considered as a background noise yeah and uh, if you have a lot of reverberation in mixes you should know that these mixes will always be not as crisp and clean as those which don't have it and that's why sound engineers usually put uh, gates on the reverberators output they want to have only the certain amount of reverberation that musically speaks yeah and not the the amount that makes it muddy so this method gives you the spatial effect that doesn't have any tail okay now let's put everything we did into the end result and add this little thing as well which is the vibrator of the carrier signal so this will introduce even more beatings because it only applies to the carrier signal and not to the modulators but it's wide and deep enough well, to my ear at least the last thing I want to mention and it's probably as important as the everything I mentioned before is this MIDI cue what I want to emphasize by the use of it here is that it actually is one of the very good approaches to use the 
hybrid of FM and subtractive, which means you create the very dense and interesting starting timbre, and then you create four months with uh, your uh, filters. And I don't mean by that just EQing the result. No, that only works for probably percussive tones. But for those uh, signals that you use to play notes, melodies and harmonies and all, you should attach the frequency of the carrier signal to the key frequencies of the filters you use. And that will make it not a cueing, but the subtractive synthesis. Yeah. And basically, all the probably those legendary uh, synthesizers, let's take from analog era, something like, I don't know, the Prophet 5, for example. Yeah. All those guys are not subtractive, as they usually called. They, in fact, are the hybrid synthesizers. <coughs> Because whenever you take the analog filter, something like those used in Prophet 5, and they were used in several different uh, synthesizers and samplers and all that, these are non-linear devices. Whenever you overload them, you get some and different tones in the same manner as you get it with uh, uh, other modulational synthesis approaches so let's take a look at what this filter does Okay, this melody is beautiful to go to sleep, so I probably should just go and try to do that. In the next video I will try to elaborate on this approach, this FM thing, and the approach that I showed in uh, first video pulsar synthesis with grain scene and let's see uh, how it goes if something is and probably there are things that uh, are not that clear please let me know write them in comments so I will read all that and um, I will collect them and then speak on those issues and clarify if something is unclear so, cheers.